Hey guys, welcome to Infant Software's webinar titled Enterprise Architect Integration with ALM. My name is Ben Hurampuri. I'm a pre-sales pre consultant here at Infant, and I will be your host for today's webinar. What's on the agenda for today? Uh, I'm going to start off with some fundamental definitions, then I'm going to move on to discussing how UML is used in software development. After that, I'll go into the details of connecting UML and application lifecycle management and the benefits this could bring. Finally, I'm going to show you CodeWeamer's Enterprise Architect integration in the course of the live demonstration. Uh, just a little more info here. After the presentation, there will be a Q&A session, but if you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type them in the question box on your GoToWebinar control panel. Also, a recording of today's webinar will be available on our website soon after the session. And when visiting our events page, make sure you take a look at our upcoming webinars and conferences and feel free to sign up for any of our future events that you find interesting. Moving on, just a few words about Infant Software. The company was founded in 1998 and is based in Stuttgart, Germany. Uh, we have partners in Korea and at Taiwan and an office in the Silicon Valley, USA. We are the sole developers and the only vendors of CodeBeamer ALM, a fully integrated and complete application lifecycle management solution with requirements management, software development, quality assurance and test management, demand management, and IT operations. We also provide consultant and services from Germany with the mission to help our clients manage the complexity of their product and application development processes. Now let's see a short list of our clients. Uh, you can see here that we are serving customers from various industries such as automotive and medical device development, the defense and finance sectors, as well as high-tech development companies. Intland Software has clients ranging from mid-sized companies to large global enterprises such as Siemens, Lufthansa, and Samsung, which really shows you how scalable our solution actually is. Okay, so moving on to the, today's topic, UML. <clears throat> to start with the basics, the Unified Modeling Language is an industry standard tool used in software engineering. It's an object-oriented modeling language that is used for modeling all kinds of system architectures. As a set of notations and rules, it helps visualize the structure of complex systems of all sorts. That said, however, it is important to distinguish between the UML model and the set of UML diagrams that depict the system. A diagram is no more than a partial representation of certain components, while the model itself is a complete visualization of the entire system. Depending on what kind of diagrams you use, for instance, you have class diagrams or the sequence and activity diagrams, your model could be static, where it represents the structure of the system using objects, relationships between these objects, and the operations and attributes that define how these objects relate and work. Or your model could be dynamic, in which case the model represents how the system behaves, how the components work together, and how the system operates as a whole. This is an activity or process-based representation. So overall, uh, UML can be used to represent both the architecture of any complex system you are developing and the process it, is, it uses when operating. Okay, so now that we understand the basics of UML, let's see how UML and application lifecycle management can efficiently work together to support your software development processes. <clears throat> software development ideally begins with identifying the goals, which in an agile environment is usually done via user stories. These user stories simply capture what the client is looking for. They summarize the end user's expected experience when using the software or system. So basically, user stories represent what they want to be able to do with the software. Let's say, for example, that as an admin, the user wants to be able to change the rules of receiving email notifications. Once you know what you want to develop, you will have to determine how to get there. This is why these user stories are then translated into requirements. And these requirements describe the expected functionality in technical terms. That is, what functionality is needed to achieve the experience that is described by the user stories. Ideally, requirements are easily understandable for software developers as they outline the modules, components, features, etc. that are needed. 
specific tasks are then derived from the requirements. Sticking to our example of notification emails, you will need a graphical user interface that lets the user tick the right boxes about what they want to receive notifications about. Then you'll need the backend systems of this. So you'll need the functionality that saves these rules and links them to each other, to each user, and you'll need a system that tracks these triggering events and actually sends out the notifications themselves. So there's multiple components even to this simple feature. If you consider all that we have just discussed, it is really easy to understand the way UML and ALM come together. The above mentioned types of UML diagrams, architectural and behavior, complement user stories and requirements perfectly. Altogether, they help understand how the whole system should operate. But let me explain this a little more. So first you have your user stories, which help you outline the processes or the behavior of the software. Then you'll draw the blueprint of the system architecture that allows you to realize these processes and helps you identify what needs to be done, what components you'll need to develop, and how those will work together. You will then describe these as requirements, split these requirements into tasks, assign them to your team members, and your piece of software is on its way to being developed. This is only part of the story, though. Not only do UML, user stories, and requirements complement each other, but they also help you stay in control of the entire development process. If you manage to connect your unified modeling language diagrams or models and your application lifecycle management platform, what you would get is practically an executable blueprint of your system. This blueprint integrated into, our, into your ALM guides the development process by letting you see the big picture at all times during development. Your ALM allows you to capture your requirements, then lets you break those down into tasks and assign these tasks to your team. You can then manage and monitor the entire process of development all the way through to testing and release. Meanwhile, using an ALM solution also lets you establish links between all these work items, giving you complete traceability and total control over all processes. So this is how UML and AML, ALM could operate together. Okay, so the benefits of using UML and ALM together should be pretty obvious by now. However, since these are two different disciplines, various different platforms and tools are used for them. Not many tools out there on the market offer both advanced ULM diagram functionality and full-blown ALM features. Using separate tools, however, it can be a hassle due to the need to integrate these. And this is exactly why we have created our enterprise architect integration with CodeFever. This integration lets you use an advanced UML solution, Enterprise Architect, to set up UML system diagrams. You can then simply synchronize this data with CodeBeamer, your integrated end-to-end -end ALM solution. The way this works is really convenient. You'll just click synchronize and import your data to CodeBeamer. Then you can use your advanced tracker system to establish links between all your work items, which lets you trace your requirements all the way through to testing and release. This ensures complete traceability throughout your entire development lifecycle. And let me show you how all this works in practice. But before we move on to the live demo, uh, let me ask you a few simple questions. This is the first one. Okay, most of you are using Microsoft, all of you, most of you are using Microsoft Office, okay. And the next one. Okay, thank you. Two more. Great. <clears throat> and the last one.
Okay, thank you. All right, so let's jump into our demonstration. So I have my uh, enterprise architect open here. I will start off in here and show you how to set up the connection first. Uh, I will go into extensions and I have my EA connector for CodeBeamer installed already. And I will click on connection properties to set it up. First, I have to um, add my CodeBeamer URL, uh, specify the username and password, and I can test my connections after I've done all this. Connection was successful. Okay, that's great. <clears throat> I can save it and next I'll have to set up the synchronization configuration before I can start to co to synchronize anything. So I already have one set up here. Um, if I go into my CodeBeamer, I, I, you can see I am in my EA CodeBeamer project and I have my tracker here, requirements EA, which is a requirements tracker that is empty and that is where I want to export and import my uh, enterprise architect items into. So if I jump back, I see I've given it a configuration name. I have a target project that I just show you, AEA CodeBeamer. I want to specify the CodeBeamer type that I want to synchronize, work item, and uh, this is the tracker I showed you earlier. And I want this item mapped as a requirement. So I have that all specified. I can choose to synchronize diagrams as well as attachments. So I have clicked that. And I'll show you what that looks like after I've exported it into CodeBeamer. So I save it and close this. Then I will open this city car requirement diagram. And I will add uh, my two requirements as objects here. I will create a link between the two just for visualization purposes. And now I have to go back into my extension and click on export. So I'm going to start by exporting this into CodeBeamer. Here I have to specify the import route. Um, this is for when you have more project models, obviously you can um, drill that down a little more specifically, but I'm just going to leave this as all of the project modules. And I have to select my configuration that I just showed you how to set up earlier requirements, enterprise architect, and I will refresh the tree. As you can see here, I can see all the items that are new in Enterprise Architect and that are not in CodeBeamer yet. Above, I have those that are identical. So those are the items that can be found in Enterprise Architect as well as in CodeBeamer. And here I can see the last one is modified in Enterprise Architect or the ones that have been changed here. So I, I will select the ones that are new in Enterprise Architect. And I can see the statistics here, two new items. Now I'll execute export. Okay, new item creation finished. They've been created in CodeBeamer, so if I go back and I refresh the page, I can see I have two new unresolved items. So I go in here and I can see that um, I have my new requirements set up here. Okay, so I'm going to add two more new requirements in CodeBeamer and import that back into Enterprise Architect. And add another one. Okay, and I will save that. And if I go back into Enterprise Architect, I'll close this export to CodeBeamer and I will go back into my extensions and select import. And here it's the same exact principle. So I have to specify an import group, select a configuration, and refresh the tree. And I can see I have new in CodeBeamer. I have ones that are identical. And here I have ones also that have been deleted in CodeBeamer, which I can import back into uh, Enterprise Architect. I'm going to only select um, the ones that are new in CodeBeamer. And again, I can execute import. <clears throat> if I click on that, I can see it has just finished. And I can see here in my uh, project models, I have my new uh, requirements. 
If I go back to my diagram, I can attach these again. And if I want, I can uh, go back and import this again or export into Code Beamer if I want to change anything. Okay, so um, that's basically it. That's all you have to do to import. You just have to set up this extension and then uh, synchronized configurations have to be set up, set up your connection product properties, but it was actually as simple as that. So this is how you import and export items from um, Enterprise Architect into CodeBeamer or the other way around. And that was actually our webinar today. So I'm going to leave it open for questions if you have any a little, for a little longer. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? Okay, so what happens, um, Marcus asks, what happens if two members work on the same object in ALM and UML? Okay, so um, that's a good question. Um, actually, the one that w that is working in UML, I believe, that is the one that overrides it. So, yeah, UML overrides a ALM with our integration right now, but that's a, a kind of a technical question I'm going to have to ask our uh, technical consultants just to clarify. But I believe that's, yeah, um, so merging is not really supported with our integration. Does that more or less answer your question? You can type it into chat or wherever, but okay. All right, great. Okay, um, our next one webinar is going to be April 6th, Jenkins Test Automation with Cold BMA. Let me make sure you, uh, you join that as well. And thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.